Introducing the panelists, uh, Kunal Kishore Sena, co-founder Value 360 Communication, Amit Khatri, co-founder Noise, and uh, Inka topic jo hai, wo hai, building category leading consumer brand in digital economy. Off you go, sir. Hi, good afternoon. I hope uh, a lot of you might not be uh, from the morning batch and you are from the second batch. So we'll have some sense of engagement with you guys. Uh, so here we are talking about uh, outliers, uh, people who have actually have gone ahead and actually built and did something which is uh, where the traditional way of doing business or traditional way of building business uh, was completely def defied and, uh, and here we are sitting with um, Amit who's co-founded Noise. If you look at India's wearable market, it is growing exponentially, recording a double-digit growth in the first quarter of 2022. And one homegrown brand is responsible to drive this growth. And uh, Noise has been uh, leading the category by far. And the only uh, amazing aspect of this is, this is not a, a traditionally funded organization. It's a bootstrapped company which has actually built a brand and now they are at an ARR of uh, 2,000 crores touching, effectively in a market which is actually also flooded by uh, many well-funded Chinese uh, organizations. So in the current ecosystem, effectively, we would want to actually uh, have a conversation with Ane Amit and understand his journey. So uh, typically, I, if I remember, you started off uh, noise with uh, with a uh, mobile accessory uh, brand and mobile cover brand and then you moved on to actually introduce the wearable and actually now it's a history. You've been actually the number one for last four quarters or almost two years now. Eight quarters. Eight quarters. <laughs> so, so effectively that goes on to establishes you as the number one wearable brand effectively in the India market. And very, very interestingly, uh, I would want to highlight here that uh, uh, because they're bootstrapped, it is important for us to understand that how digital ecosystem has actually created a level playing uh, ground for a lot of brands who might traditionally not be a multinational brand, uh, might be cash crunched, but effectively have been able to create attraction with their audience, with their consumer. So Amit, uh, just wanted to have a reflection on your journey. How did you start and what was your uh, go-to market strategy when you started to build your consumer brand and especially when you uh, didn't had funds to flood the market with mass media campaign and targeting big consumer there? Hi everyone, uh, first of all, uh, I got to know that none of you are allowed to move out of the room since morning. So. <laughs> We would try to wrap it up uh, quite fast. So, you know, uh, sorry. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I, I feel bootstrapping has been a blessing for us because we, it was not by choice. Uh, when we needed funds, those were not available. We started uh, eight years back, so uh, the, the capital market was not like that. And, and when funds were limited, so we had to build product, uh, which, so there were giants in the market who were companies like bigger Chinese mobile players and all. So we had to come in for a product which could uh, fight with them. So obviously we couldn't go mainstream. So we had to find out areas which would solve problem for people. So we started identifying categories which are easy. I mean, which is nobody is there. So I was, we, we read that book called Purple Cow that time. So it was like, do something which people would notice. So we, we, we thought of why not we enter into a category which is wearable, hearable, where very less competition is there. And, and that's how it started. And, and fortunately, you know, that mobile uh, boom was there. So it's, it was an inflection point when uh, every consumer was moving from a feature phone to a smartphone. So which means an entire era was going digital. So I mean, 10 years back, it was all uh, offline businesses. It was distribution. And now it was, so we started first from our website, which was D2C. So it was very easy. The inventories were very less. You could sell what you want and there was no middleman. So I think that differentiation in product really helped us uh, to take an advantage in the age where bigger brands were there. Sure. So I heard D2C uh, presence, effectively uh, web presence. That gives you opportunity to actually reach out to your end customer through uh, a lot of uh, 
uh, mediums where you do not need to necessarily pump in a big chunk of budgets. So a, a reflection in terms of how did you actually start to look at the mediums where you should actually effectively first start with uh, consumer outreach. And, and in your experience, which medium would have driven the maximum brand uh, loyalty or consumer acquisition for you? So, so I feel we need to see what, what so as a, as a brand we talk to consumers who are 18 to 35 years of an age, yeah. so primarily they are not offline consumers, no. yeah. they, they are online buyers, so they are very digital savvy, so for us all, we don't do brand brand spends as, as such, all our performance, so you know, in people people watch, people spend time on Insta, people spend time on Google, YouTube, so these are uh, mediums which has given us high ROI and growth, I mean we have hardly spent on mediums like newspaper or TV. TV, we have never spent. Sure. It's all OTT. Wherever there's a young consumer, we spend money is there. And if you look at it, it's very easy. You know, high interest people, you can show them an ad once, you can retarget it, you can measure it. So I think the time is uh, moved towards uh, these kind of mediums now. People don't want to spend more than 10 seconds now. Yeah. Short form content. So actually, overexposure of the content across platform, uh, we are we are cluttered with the kind of content that we are actually uh, looking at. at. At this given point of time, it is very, very critical and also important for any brand to have a very, very strong digital uh, uh, approach and that's what Amit was explaining. And in the morning, one of the session, uh, we had this discussion where uh, we talked about that how this whole ecosystem which is evolving into digital uh, multimedia format uh, content consumption that is happening, how it is creating opportunity for uh, many brands to actually go beyond and reach to their end customers, not even have to spend big budgets and you can actually start to acquire because you can uh, do a lot uh, with your digital marketing like uh, Amit was explaining, you could possibly start to uh, retarget some of the customers who have engaged with your content, somebody who's actually liked your product, you can actually re purpose your content with them on a time to time basis to ensure that there is a conversion that is happening and effectively that is also a reflection. So Amit, uh, just touching upon that, uh, beyond digital marketing, um, what were the other mediums that you uh, or your team actually invested in? So when did you guys went on uh, from your own D2C platform to uh, uh, marketplace. So uh, we started first with uh, our website, uh, maybe late 2014 we started uh, doing mobile covers, mobile accessories as a space and when we started moving to marketplaces for uh, getting more penetration or get getting more sales, there uh, we realized that they, the KPI was to generate more consumers which means they were primarily price driven, keep, give us more cheaper, cheaper, cheaper and we realized that if you have to sell something meaningful where we could drive more, uh, a better product to a consumer, it has to be D2C website. But I think uh, maybe 2016 we realized that uh, it is very difficult to scale uh, beyond a point on a website and you know these marketplaces were really burning a lot. And anyways they, they have the largest chunk, I mean 70% sales come from Flipkart, Amazon, maybe at that time we realized that we should move on to those platforms and that really helped us because you know there also there is a lot of digital marketing by the way, if you have to sell on Amazon, you have to run ads there. So those are also targeted ads, gender, or uh, what what they have purchased before or not. So effectively, I don't know, and a lot of people are from communication. Effectively, it might come uh, uh, f to you as a, uh, as a matter of surprise, but uh, commerce marketing is a very big deal. And commerce marketing is enabling a lot of D2C brand that has gone and become big, like your sugar cosmetic or uh, Mama Earth. Mama Earth. Earth. Yeah. All of them, they have used commerce marketing in a big way. So like you had at one given point of time, search engine marketing. Similarly, now if you are if you are unable to actually effectively do your commerce marketing on your platforms like Amazon and other marketplaces, effectively you will be failing when it comes to people who are already interested in a category of product that you are actually selling. And that's where I think, uh, I, I believe Noise and the team were able to excel effectively. So if you look at all traditional brands, they are struggling on this part only. I mean, the primary medium was TV, newspapers, but they also have to pivot themselves to digital medium. And that's, that, that's where the growth, if you look at brands uh, like if this uh, beauty cosmetics, look at Mama, uh, Sugar, I mean, all are giving uh, tough competition to HUL and all. 
and they are doing wonders in the space. Fantastic. Uh, one learning that you would have and uh, that you would like to give us in terms of just how important is communication and when I say communication, PR uh, would be in your brand journey where uh, your story needs to be effectively told uh, to your stakeholders. So uh, a reflection on that. So, uh, so as, as uh, entrepreneurs, we always tend to focus on doing business growth and sustaining ourselves and we put uh, PR as a last leg but I, I, I think uh, we started very late, maybe a year back we started doing PR but it's about the right communication to the people inside, to the people outside who are consumer and there is a third world also which are your investor community and uh, they need to know your story, so it is really critical and I think any organization should focus it on the day one. I mean, people say that you are doing wonders, but if nobody knows, what's the point of it? You got the headline for your uh, uh, story if you are writing at Gully Team that uh, directly coming from the CEO, co-founder of Noise that while as an entrepreneur we think PR as at the last leg, it is one of the most important uh, uh, part or, or function within the brand building exercise and I, I agree with it because I believe that if you're doing great business you have a great story to tell if you are unable to tell your story effectively uh, you are doing injustice to your people to your organization and effectively to your brand also uh, today and as Sorry, we a, a Hindi quote you know I was uh, Kunal sitting with one of a very senior journalist uh, six months back and he told me that jungle mein more nacha kisne dekha so <laughs> that's how I realized ki. <laughs> okay, so th that is that is true and now aap to jungle mein nahi, aap to market mein top kar rahe ho. That is effectively a great uh, aspect to even celebrate and uh, be there. So now that you are on the top of the game, uh, how, as in, because we've seen players like Nokia have gone and become obsolete uh, in times to come. So is there a fear that how do you retain your position at the top and what will it take for you? So here, and I would also like to plug in uh, being a PR professional, how PR is going to play an important role here and how your product planning and innovation, because I remember you've just launched Noise Labs, which will largely focus on uh, disruptive product in the market. And I've seen the first product and it's very, very interesting. So I want to actually touch upon that aspect, that how important it is for an entrepreneur to actually completely focus on being future ready and not become obsolete uh, in times to come. And we have great examples like Blackberry, Nokia and others. So you know, uh, when you said uh, staying on top, so we honestly believe that staying on top is the wrong race to be taken. The, what we believe in, uh, let's build an organization which is sustainable for decades. I mean, let's say if you ask, noise to be on top forever then the kind of decisions we need to take we need to dress up the organization for that and those would not be healthy for the organization to sustain for long so i mean that's not the end goal end goal is to make a sustainable organization and for that we need to be on top to the consumer i mean what they're looking at so as noise we just launched a vertical called noise labs so uh when you do, do a commodity play, it's race to the bottom. I mean, let's say you guys are in PR. So if you do the same pitch to the client, nobody's interested actually. You need to think out of the box. For, I mean, for communication part, let's look at this classic example, cred, the campaigns. I mean, people like it or don't like it, but they're out of the box. So they spend good money, but they're viral also on that point. So coming back, uh, uh, we believe in, uh, we need to keep uh, focused on future technology. So there are a lot of examples. Nokia is there, Blackberry is there, there are a lot of, Kodak is there, for yeah, example. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's true for any, any brand to stay relevant uh, to the consumer. So as Noise, we are very much focused to work on new age technologies which are not uh, mainstream right now, but uh, they are expected or they have a potential to change the experience in the coming time. Sure. Amit, uh, four years and number one in the wearable category, um, there are many things that you would have done right. Um, if you have to go back and correct something where you feel that you would have done it differently, uh, in and it's a short period of time, I know, but uh, you feel that that is something that, or largely I want to actually talk about, these are all success, 
what was the failure in this four years where uh, you feel that you could have done things differently? So, so you know, I mean, in any business, this is a repeat. Customer is a key key area, you know. So uh, when we, maybe five years back or four years back, uh, we never used to focus on after sales uh, as a metric. So we, we were just focused on dumping the products in the market. And what we realized that one of the product had uh, issues, but by the time we realized that there were defects in it, it was too late for us. We have dumped lack of lakhs of inventories in the market, and it took six months for us to, you know, recover back. So maybe for for your context, it has to be the customer has to be retained with you for years actually. So for any business, after sales is key. So you can relate it to your business. How how does the after sale matter? And second is what I feel uh, when we started, or maybe a year back, we never thought that. Uh, we can grow so fast, so you know, building the team for future is very important. I mean, you hire a talent, they join in in three months, you train them for six months, and by the time they are there, you've, you've grown way ahead. So I mean, getting the organization future ready, start thinking big about where you want to see yourself in three to five years uh, time and believe in that and build accordingly. Talent is, is, is a very, very important subject and um, as we speak of talent, I wanted to touch upon uh, COVID had impacted many businesses and it had uh, thrown new challenges for many businesses. Uh, however, I believe during COVID time, you did the best business. So I want to, uh, uh, I want you to actually touch upon that aspect and uh, what was the reason as in our, uh, or w was there a strategy or was this a, um, have buoy buoyancy in the market because the content was uh, on people were getting into fitness at that point of time. So just a reflection on that. So, so Kunal, we, we were D2C brand. So I mean, our, our prime, maybe 90% business was online. So when market was shut, it was all uh, business came online. And uh, when people were getting laid off and we were the ones who were hiring people. So maybe we doubled our headcount in the last two years time from where we are. are but when you, so right now also, let's forget that time also. Now you see every second day there is a news of layoff. So there is, I was reading it today's newspaper, there is a com crypto uh, company which laid yes. off 800 odd folks yes. uh, yesterday. So that happens when you are chasing uh, inorganic growth and which is not sustainable. So as organization, since we are bootstrapped, so we were very clear that who to hire, what cost to hire and how many to hire. So that has really never hit us bad. And I mean, we are still hiring people. I mean. Up it's a, it's a very, very interesting uh, debate uh, that uh, uh, entrepreneurs will have is uh, that uh, are we looking at uh, high, as in, and it is also for investor-led organizations, they are looking at market share, which is hyper growth. And here you built a business which is a market leader, but you want to believe that we should be building a sustainable business rather than a hyper growing business. So, as in, how do you how do you actually how do you maintain a balance? Tomorrow you might have a big private equity investor who would be interested in your business, will come flush in money, and they'll say that you go and become the and take the market share, uh, deepen. Ab to koi nahi bola. <laughs> so I think that was a case uh, for the last two years, but right now everybody has said all investors have said to their company, slow down growth. We need profitable growth. That's true. Sequoia Capital's letter is all there in the outside. So Everyone, every the, all yeah. investors are seeing this. Every investor is now seeing after the IPO debacle of many businesses and many startups that growth and market uh, beyond profitability should not be taken into too seriously. So before it was just growth, acquire customers at any cost. You have seen balance sheets of all companies who have gone IPO also. So they were. 400, 500, 600 crores losses. The revenues were lesser than the losses they were ma making, but now the market, so I was reading a article, it was written, uh, GMV growth is RIP, you know, rest in peace. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. People don't talk about GMV, now investors have started talking about EBITDA margins, profitability. Yeah. So that was not sustainable, it just lasted for two years. Yeah, and I think this, this is a very important metrics that has started a, uh, to do rounds and effectively it will help a lot of businesses who are actually very very solid on the foundation of EBITDA and the unit economics. I um, wanted to uh, touch upon on one aspect is the, that is uh, does industry or the ecosystem today allows I see you guys as an outlier but 
does industry allows how many, and I don't know how many bootstrapped companies in four years have created a 2,000 crore business, but today looking at your own experience, does ecosystem and industry allows uh, an organization like yours where, uh, or similar to yours, where they can actually build such a mass scale brand? Here I want to twist it around Kunal, it's just not about the industry, it's about your product. So if you have a right product, you will find a way out. I mean, we were the outliers there because uh, we always focused on product and the consumer. Our thesis was clear, ki, let's build a product which the consumers would want to and there is a market gap. Had we been, I mean, okay, when we started there were a lot of brands doing uh, wired earphones which Sony used to sell, there are there are hundred brands used to sell. We, we realized that if you have to do it, first of all, we need to sell it a 10% cheaper price and the distribution cost was so high that we had to bleed on day one. So had that been the case with noise, we would not have even have started or maybe gone out in, from the market in three months. We focused on what product to do, wh where there is a gap, what people are looking at, and we focused on nar narrow, set of con narrow set of consumers. So product is the key, Kunal, and uh, if you have a right product, I think uh, today the ecosystem is very wonderful. Uh, uh, you can start your website in three days time. You can sell, uh, there are a lot of enablers now, there is a lot of, uh, specifically D2C, there are a lot of enablers which are logistics and all. Yeah. And from here you can start selling across the globe, there are brands, Vadham Tees. Yeah. They're classic examples, they ship internationally, uh, sitting here and what does it take? Yeah. Just a website and the right uh, marketing. Yeah. Guys, you have some ideas in terms of how you can actually look at building some venture for yours, because effectively there is a good ecosystem that has been created and you have enablers uh, who, where you do not need to really work hard to actually create your own logistic bit. I wanted to do a small rapid fire with you like Karan Jor, so. Go ahead. <laughs> so we'll ask you and uh, what is the first word that comes to your mind when you hear the following? IOT. Future. Startup. Fun. Competition. High performance. <laughs> Music. Uh, relaxation. Glocal. Uh, global. Glocal. Glocal. Vision. Okay. PR. Stay away. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. mujhe, the PR agency brief there is to bola ki nothing is off the record. So yeah. you journalist kitta bhi poken kare, be yeah. mindful of that. What he meant is that be always off record with journalists. <laughs> there is nothing called off record. But stay close to PR, <laughs> what he meant. <laughs> and the PR partners. Millennials? Uh, future. future. Noise? Passion? Okay. I, I, this will be the last question that I want to ask and um, uh, and this is important for me also because I'm an entrepreneur myself. What are the avenues from a business standpoint, what are the avenues that uh, an entrepreneur should invest on? So like you're a tech company, whether you should be investing on talent or technology or market growth. So effectively, um, uh, what could be your focus? So your two co-founders, effectively you would have a role to play. So uh, your take in terms of what should be uh, some key important aspect to focus on on your business side of it. So I feel in most of the businesses, technology is an enabler. So for in our case, it's a product, but most of the cases, technology is an enabler. So that definitely, if you have to survive, you need to invest on technologies. But uh, for me, the key aspect, aspect of investment would be people because like we are not in manufacturing actually. So whatever you do, it's talent, be it marketing, be it product, be it technology. So I, I, given a choice to me, I would put all my investments in right set of people who would help us to build uh, organizations for future. Thank you, Amit. Thank you for your time and lovely uh, uh, insights uh, from your journey. And I think your input here is uh, well uh, mutually agreed upon by me because I think we are a people-driven uh, industry. Uh, mostly uh, while technology will come into play and uh, there will be new technology play that will ease our job but I think
people are going to drive our business uh, effectively. So it, it's so in your business. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's it is it is the key. So in PR, I believe that um, there is nothing beyond uh, our people, and uh, and the investment there is most critical. So thank you, uh, Amit. I think this was a lovely uh, discussion, and I personally learned few things from you today. Thank, thank you so thank you. much. My pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, panelists. A big round of applause for both of them, Kunal Kishore Sinha and Amit Khatri.